Hello, friends and family of Zascom. My name is Eric Ballou. This is Cannibal Industries. Welcome to the shop. I have something very awesome to talk to you folks about today. Uh, it is a new device from Zascom. It's their latest generation of wireless receivers. And if you think that I'm going to talk about the RX-8, I'm going to talk about the RX-8. The RX-8 is the latest generation of wireless receiver from Zaxcom. It will house two of the latest generation wireless receiver modules, and that could be in the form of the MRX-214 or the MRX-414 or combinations thereof. It will take this audio and either pipe it out of a DB25 connector on the side of it, or you can send it out as Dante. Now, when you look at this device in Dante controller, what you're going to see is a device that is it's a 16 out 4 in which means we got 16 channels of something coming to us and we can send four back the other way. So what are the external devices you could run with this? You could potentially run an RX-4 also with an MRX-414 into it. So that would give you 12 channels coming back home. Or you could run this with a RX-12 with another, you know, with four QRX-212s in it and give yourself an actual 16 discrete channels over Dante. I've had this device here for the last month and a half roughly, and I have been putting it through a very rigorous set of tests and punishments, etc. Basically trying to determine how battle ready this unit is. The RX-8 has two powering options. It can either be powered over Hiroshi or it can be powered over Ethernet. So what kind of distances can we expect from RX-8 powering this thing over Ethernet? So we did a, we did quite a few of them. We tried the simple stuff like let's go five feet, let's go 10, 25. And then we worked our way up and we, we, we tried to find that top end of, of where it was, where I would consider the signal reliability to be bulletproof. And that here has been 250 feet over a single cat six cable coming off of the switch that i'm using which is a trendnet ti pg 62b this particular switch is capable of taking inputted voltage of 12 volts stepping up to the full poe standard which is basically 56 volts and powering the device be powered externally we've been able to achieve 300 feet over cat 7. now here's the rx8 it's pretty sexy it falls right in the stylizing line of diva 24 and the Nova. Now let's talk about the specs. This unit weighs two pounds with two MRX 414s in it. The height is one inch. The faceplate is the exact same width as the Nova. If you were to measure from the SMA connector to the pull handle of the MRX 414 on the opposite side, you're gonna be looking at 9.275 inches from the SMA connector on the front to the 12 volt output on the back, you're looking at 8.25. So I'm gonna start walking around the device starting with the front. You've got two SMA connectors that are the standard all the way across all Zaxcom products. We've got laser printing here, and it's the same as on the Nova where the MRX modules go in upside down. And always remember, do secure the modules inside of this unit. There is a header connector in there, and if they're not secured and they come loose, it can cause damage to that header. Not good, obviously. This RJ45 port is the only connection you need to operate the unit. It is compatible with PoE standards 802.3AT and 802.3BT. You have a Hiroshi 12 volt input. You've got a BNC connection, which follows the analog output number four that you can configure in Dante controller. You have two SMA outputs and these are post filter. And then you've got the power switch. For my application and what we're gonna be talking about today is really just taking the thing to the max. What can we really get out of it, okay? I'm sitting in front of the, one of the newer carts from my shop. I call it the Warmonger. So let me give you a crash course of what's going on with this cart, okay? This is running the Diva 24 with the latest operating system of 4.10. Basically custom built a power supply out of all industrial automation components. AC power that comes into this breaker. We got a lightning arrestor. AC gets turned into DC here. Uh, that DC goes into this UPS. This UPS is taking voltage from here, but it's also recharging a very powerful lithium ion battery. Moving along the line, we have solid state breakers, which are super fast and very, very awesome. And then we have um, a series of power over ethernet ports here. Now, the way that I am making Dante work with this cart is with this device from Sonifex. This is the AVN AES IO8R. And when this shows up, and Dante controller it is a 16 AES in and 16 AES out unit. So if you saw on the front, there was an RX-12 on there and you're gonna notice this row of switches. And each one of these switches is a triple pole double throw. And in the up position, 
the Diva 24 is getting its AES from the RX-12. If I click any of these down, then the AES is signal coming from the SonFX AES outputs. So this would be switches up. That's going to be for the local receiver. Switches down. That's going to be for a Dante device. And I can toggle back and forth. The DB25 is wired per the Tascam standard. However, the breakout generator depends on which mode the RX-8 is in. I have eight AES outputs coming from this RX-12, which are feeding into AES inputs 9 through 16 on this RX-8. And then our other four connectors here are the four analog outputs. So we have analog 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in my particular setup, what I foresee doing is these two would be set aside for if I need to go to playback or if I need to do a Phonak thing or I've got to, you know, do a powered speaker for a music cue. Those are reserved for that. Number three would be basically public comms going into an IFB 200 or to a CL3 or a CL4. And then on the fourth one, I believe what I'm going to end up doing on the day is actually terminating this to a BNC. Now you're probably wondering why would I need two BNCs? Well, so what I intend to do is, is in the routing with Dante controller is I will route time code to analog output number four of this unit. Now, when you do, when you do that, that time code is going to, you know, come out of this fourth analog, but it also will come out of this BNC connector. And what that'll do is, is let's say I decide to build a cage for this device. Then, you know, the BNC output of this always comes to the IFB 200. Now, if I'm working remotely or from a truck or something like that, and something has to be rejammed, well, it's going to be really nice and convenient if I've got a courtesy BNC feeding time code for jamming slates out there on the remote box. Okay, so let's talk about Dante Virtual Sound Card. Now, if you've not used Dante before, you don't have to run this all the time. This is just an initial configuration type of software. If you want to go through and make changes on the fly, you can. Okay, so you're going to see on this top row, I've got three possible transmitting units. Then I have three possible receiving units. And what I have set up is, is from the RX-8, I have it one-to-one -one going from the RX-8 over to Dante Virtual Sound Card, which is why we're seeing levels showing up in Reaper. Then I also have this set up to be one-to-one -one into the DV24. And here's my voice showing up on all 16 channels. If you're familiar with navigating the menus of the RX-4, then navigating the menus of the RX-8 is going to be very familiar to you. Now, up until this point, I've given a lot of attention to running the RX-8 in Dante mode. So I'd like to switch gears and show you it in a non-Dante mode running with the Nova. So as it is set up now, the left module is outputting four digital signals and the right module is outputting four analog signals because that matches up with what I have available on the Nova. And I'm gonna get back to a little something cool. Digital outputs one, two, three, four are coming out of this pigtail and they're going into the DB15 mini. So there's our four digital inputs. Then analog outputs one, two, three, four are landing at the Nova preamps inputs one, two, three, four. Then it occurred to me after I made this pretty cool pigtail that I could have gone even farther with that. What I could have done was had the analog outputs one, two, three, and four going into return number one, return number two, because you can record the returns. Now let's take it on back to the extreme. Let me show you a Nova with all 18 inputs maxed out with an RX-8. On track one, we got our mix. You can see we got everything on post fader. And then we're gonna start with those four digital outputs coming out of this RX-8. We're gonna bring those in on digital inputs one, two, three, and four. Then we're gonna get a little crazy. We're gonna take the fifth and sixth outputs, which are coming out line level. We're gonna bring those in on returns one and two. Then we're gonna take seven and eight, and bring those in on analog inputs three and four. We take analog inputs one and two, and we make those for hard line booms. Boom one, boom two. And we still haven't even touched the internal receivers yet. We can add another eight wires to this whole thing. So on track 12, we're going to start off with internal receiver one, and then two, three, four. At this point, we're now going to come up against the maximum hardware limitation of this machine, and we could take RX 5 through 8 and gang those up together on the 16th input. 
you start playing around with doing some auto mix, you've got 18 inputs into this device. It's incredible. Well, I think this is a good time to wrap it up. I wanted to say thank you for taking some time out of your day so I could share this with you. The RX-8 is an incredible piece of hardware and look forward to more videos where I go into even further detail on this device. See you later.